Hi guys, here's Michael from the first Zoom crew. It has been a while, but uh, our friends at Fortix just sent us a fresh from the production line, a new product. They, they are trying to ship it right now and uh, get ready. So um, this is the Fortix 7 HD monitor. Um, it's so new, we don't even got it with the packaging, so we can show you just what it comes with. Um, and as you see, it has a nice logo here, Fortix Hector 7 HD here on top. Um, if you remember, we got a 9 HD monitor from them, um, just to show you the difference. So this was the 9 inch monitor. It's a little bit bigger, of course, 9 inch. It's also, of course, heavier. Um, and it has a couple of features, not yet, which this one already has. So just here is the size difference. And uh, now I'll show you the 7 HD monitor. So this new monitor, you saw that. Um, you don't see the monitor here. There's a plastic uh, plate in front as a protection. But also, if you flip that open here, like this, you see it's automatically a shade on it for the monitor when you shoot outside and um, you can of course also detach that but it's it's a nice uh, gimmick on top and it helps you for sure when you shoot outside and it's very quick to um, actually get it off as well and of course you can take that down you just slightly slip that a bit up and there you go so if you look at the front panel of this uh, monitor um, you have the certain buttons down here. One is the shutter release button, the pop button, the sleep button, the menu button, the backwards and forwards buttons here, the source button to switch between the sources, the infrared sensor for the remote, and LED for the power, and over here is the autofocus button. Um, the functionality of this is also uh, depending, of course, on your um, camera and uh, battery grips and so on. So that's the front side of that um, monitor. On the bottom side here, we have a nice metal mount for uh, tripods or for different kind of rigs, wherever you want to mount it. And then when we go to the back side of the monitor itself, we have here these AV plugs with uh, the video signal, yellow, and the two plugs for the stereo signal. Down here is the battery release uh, button and here itself is the field for the battery. The batteries which are used on here are these uh, kind of Sony camcorder batteries. Um, in this case one comes with it from Fotix. This is uh, 7.2 volt and it has about 5200 milliampere hours of uh, capacity. So um, the, we didn't try it out yet but it should last for about five hours uh, continuously um, running the monitor. Um, of course, if you have more of this, you can use them as well. Just here on the back, clip them on, it's the same standard. Next to that, we have two plugs, two HDMI plugs. Um, one is for uh, the in signal, it's just here. And you have another plug here going out, so you can actually connect it to a second uh, monitor or a second device. Um, and the important thing, it's a loop through entrance. So it, it comes here and the signal you get here is also what you will get out. It's not the resized signal from the monitor itself, but rather the source signal. And down here, they improved it and had added this uh, cable clamp here. So you can attach these cables and clamp them uh, and they won't plug out easily during the shoot or uh, whenever you, you touch the cable. Then down here is another uh, switch. This switch is on off uh, basically for the battery itself. So you really can switch it off and it won't drain um, the battery at all. And right next to that is the plug for the 12 volt DC. So if you want to connect it with the AC adapter, just plug it here and it will run from the AC adapter. One certain uh, speciality of this switch is if you plug it with the AC adapter and you actually switch it on and have a battery here, the whole thing will charge the battery and run on the normal power supply. So you can charge the battery while you are, say, have the AC adapter connected and then if you need to detach that, you your battery is actually charged. And right next to that, there are two more plugs here, the shutter control connector and then here is the headphone connector. Okay, so you can also listen to the sound in a much more clear way. Up here are some outlets uh, for built-in um, loudspeakers, but of course uh, if you can connect it with a headset that will be much more uh, clear and uh, smooth. Okay, so that's the monitor itself. Let's see what else on accessories comes with it. 
is for one is the battery charger. In this case, a normal 110 volt system. Um, and one of these batteries, I already mentioned that one. Then the AC adapter here. Of course, these plugs will vary to the region where you buy it. So in our case, it's the 110 volt uh, the American system. But uh, depending where you buy it, there will be European plugs, Australian plugs, uh, or British systems. Then these cables, uh, as you see, there's a whole bunch of them. These are different connectors for different camera uh, types and camera ma makers. So they support basically all the bigger brands of DSLR cameras. Um, but uh, you, will, you can check out on the website of Photix and I'm sure they will list up which camera models and which camera makers are supported uh, so to make sure that uh, these connectors are actually working for you as well. Um, now the three cables I wanted to show you in detail. Um, the actual HDMI cable coming with it looks like this. So you have the mini HDMI on one side which connects to your camera and on this side you have actually a 90 degree HDMI plug which goes to the monitor. So that 90 degree um, angle of course helps you to have a more stable connection and especially if there is some touch on the cable with the clamp it, will, it won't go on the plug and um, the whole connection will be very stable and won't uh, wear out that, that easy than usual. Then the plugs we have additionally here, there is another um, cable for the remote for the shutter control and so on. So I have a 7D here, Canon 7D. And uh, if you look to the side, so this, this plug just goes in here on that plug and then it connects with the monitor down here, or sorry, down back here and then you have a connection between the two and you actually can use the shutter release button, the bulb uh, button with, uh, on the monitor to control them on the camera. So you can take pictures while you look at the monitor and you also can release the shutter and uh, make sure that the functionality is, is there as well. Um, the last cable I wanted to show you is this cable. It has a very special plug here on the side. Now, this cable is especially when you use more uh, other Photix equipment, especially the battery grips. So this plug here would plug into that plug on the side of the Photix grip, like this, and then you connect it as well with the monitor again. Um, the advantage of this is that you get more functionality, uh, especially the autofocus will work and um, they are actually working on several other uh, options depending on the camera maker and the grip. Um, they will uh, increase this functionality. What doesn't work yet is that you uh, start the video recording function through the monitor, um, at least not with the Canon. Um, so that's another thing which has to be done and, and uh, directly on the camera on the back here. But the rest you can control from the monitor. So you can watch your video, you can record it, re look at there. Uh, you can shoot photos from the monitor, but what you can't do is start the, the video recording from the monitor. Okay, the last item we have here is this little thin, small remote. Um, this remote has a certain functions on it. One is the sleep button, um, the other one is uh, the source button where you can switch between the different sources, the mute button for the audio, menu button of course and the navigation for the menu and the volume control. Um, the whole thing is an infrared, um, infrared uh, remote and um, with the sensor up front we saw you can steer and uh, access that. So you don't even need to touch the monitor for uh, having these functionalities and can switch it on and off. Uh, and change settings in, in there if you want. That's a little nice gift on the side. So we take the monitor and attach the battery on the back here like this and just switch it in. And uh, well, you switch it in in the front. You see in the moment uh, there will be the screen getting online. Logo. And then you're ready to go. So we have the monitor here in a test setup with the 7D. Um, first some specs from the monitor itself. Uh, the resolution of this 7 inch monitor is 1024 by 600 pixel. Um, the backlight is produced by LED lights and that gives a contrast ratio of 700 to 1 and a brightness of 350 candela per square meter. So as you can see here, um, it gives you a very clear picture of uh, the whole scene. And if I pull the focus, you will see that very clear on here too. So you see a clear picture of composition and focus, which you can pull here, just to 
demonstrate that. Now maybe we have a look at this setup. Uh, we basically just used the 7D with a 100mm f2.8 macro lens pointed on my watch and that's the picture you get in this setup here. Um, you see you have all the information which you usually have on the camera below here and you have the extra screen here as well which helps you with pulling the focus um, and seeing the whole composition way clearer than you could on the back of the camera. Okay, so let's have a look in the menu. As you can see, there are certain functions you can set. The first one is picture with uh, picture mode, contrast ratio, brightness, color, sharpness, and uh, color temperature and uh, the noise. And the next point is the sound. So you can also set the sound mode, the treble, the bass, um, the balance, the auto volume, surround sound, and a small equalizer is on there. Then you can set the clock, of course, off time, on time, sleeper times, and auto sleep. The point for options, you can set the language. If we go in here, see it's supporting quite some languages here, some which I don't even know what they are. Let's stick with English. Um, you have this blue screen function here for the menu, and um, you can set it to default. And then we go back to the menu. The last point is you can even do a software, a software update via USB and play the new, newest firmware in here, so far for the menu.